This is KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank. What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of No Other Pod. I'm Jimmy, along with my good buddy Daniel Kuzer. Dan, what's going on, my friend? It's uh, it's Royal Rumble week. It is Royal Rumble week. Look at you paying attention. <laughs> That's it's one of the best weeks of the wrestling calendar. So get it excited. Is. This is this is the start of like the two three month period where I pay close attention. You should. It's when like the st- they start ramping up the storytelling, the fucking you know uh, rivalries and stuff. It's pretty mm-hmm. cool. Yeah, it's it's always a good time. I'm always I'm always excited to watch the Rumble and see you know one or two people from my childhood come back for about thirty seconds before they break their <laughs> hip and have to get out of the uh, out of the ring. Man, you want to uh, uh, you want to do something fun uh, sure. with me and Marissa? We should draft numbers and whatever number we draw that's who we root for in the rumble interesting we do it every year it's kind of fun for the men's and women as long as i don't get some asshole like austin theory you might you might but the (laughs) the thing is you don't know you don't know who's gonna win you know yeah that's interesting Uh, i like that cool 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 we'll we'll hit you up with your number let's do it yeah yeah no (laughs) i'm excited it's it's good but what's what's going on what's going on with me man nothing nothing really Uh, i'm just wearing my uh Loser KU hoodie, hoping they get the, <laughs> hoping they got the W last night. If you're listening, hoping hoping Cincinnati didn't smash them, but uh, it is what yeah. it is. Uh, Big Twelve's well, crazy. Hoping they got the W as well because uh, I took that preseason DraftKings boost on uh, KU to win the Big Twelve regular series uh, regular season championship, and uh, oh. I'm a little nervous. So. It's smart. I mean, it's smart, but dude, the Big Twelve is tough. Yeah, I mean, this is not a KU podcast, but it could. I mean, you can get Nick, you can get our guy Nick in here. We could go crazy on KU basketball, man. Uh, I'm, sure I'm sure you could. Big 12 is just nonsense every year. It's nonsense. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry that, uh, you know, West Virginia, that was a tough game. But then, thankfully, the Chiefs followed it up with a win. So we're not Chiefs and podcast, you but that was exciting. So. And you believe that happened. Yeah. Yeah. I, dude, that was emotional. It was. Like, I mean, that kicker, it's not the kicker's fault. I mean, there were other things. A guy flat out dropped the ball on it's the just, other team. Uh, the curse of Buffalo. Field goals go wide right. I got to tell you, man, it's back to that word. Y'all should use it. Schadenfreude. I absolutely enjoy seeing a grown man wearing the other team's colors leaking from the eyeballs. Oh, the, that one dude, he's been all over Sports Center nonstop since. 100%. Yes, he has. Because it was like, bro, this is sports. Why does this matter so much to you? You got to relax. Imagine if you're that guy and he's got to go into work on monday and be like hey everybody how, how you doing how was your weekend they're like well, well i don't know how your weekend was yeah oh you do because <laughs> my eyes are still swollen from this weekend <laughs> oh it's too much i had it to the mean repertoire do they uh, tell me this i mean we talk kansas city sports because we're fans of all of it right yes you're a packers fan but you're a chiefs fan by proxy yeah uh i'm sad again, packers. do they have a chance against the ravens you think yeah i think i mean if you want, uh, we're a football podcast, so uh, we'll give you our, our, our NFL enough. brief hot take. I mean, look, are, are the Ravens probably the best team left of the four? I would say my logical brain says yes. Do I think the Chiefs could beat them? Yes, I also think the Chiefs could beat them. I got to so, tell you, man, when you got Josh Allen running all over your ass, you think Lamar Jackson ain't sitting at home going, just licking his chops ready to go? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Chiefs defense can come up big, and Chiefs defense can, uh, you know, let up a lot of running plays. So if, if they let the Ravens run all over them like they did uh, at times with the the Bills, I don't know. But I, look, Wild. if if Patrick Mahomes has the ball in his hand, I'm not going to count him out. No, you can't count him out. I mean, it is playoffs are a different beast, man. The mm-hmm. excitement is crazy, and I, I'm sorry if my mind's not here in soccer mode, but oh, it's, it's got to be. We got to shift because somebody got Sonic. <laughs> we, uh, I'm not going to say we did it. We got but, him, but we did record on uh, Thursday. We did, and then in true no other pod tradition, we release an episode and uh, some big news drops immediately after. Yeah, and that big news was was a Friday morning. I think it was was Gavin Wilkinson, sporting director, for a lengthy period of eight days, was. They mutually agreed to release him from his contract, is what the statement said. If you look at specifically, this was timestamped 9 a.m. 
on Friday, which the way I found out was hilarious because I text you and I'm in like journalism <laughs> mode and I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm like, you know, I might try to, you know, get in touch with the media team of some of the sponsors of the team and just see if they have a comment or a statement. Like, I don't expect they will, but I just am curious trying to do due diligence and all of your replies. I'm pretty sure sh- the only thing your reply said was we got them. <laughs> you might as well have sent back the 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 meme from back in the Iraq war days where it's like, ladies and gentlemen, we got them. And it's got like, yeah. it, with the mission accomplished banner and everything. Because I was like, hold on, what? You, <laughs> I don't, you typed a lot. I you did. typed a lot for no reason. I was Essentially in, no reason. <laughs> I was in full on journalism mode. And I was oh, like, man. I'm trying to, uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure this out. Like I'm trying to do like an actual you know, bit of, of, of journalism here, if you will, and, and see if, if sponsors had any sort of comment. And, uh, yeah, it was just, it was so funny. Just, uh, we got him, and I was like, Oh, okay. Well, there you go, bro. I went shopping. I was grocery shopping Yeah, and I had my list. Yep. I'm a Friday morning grocery shopper. Uh, it's weird timing. I know, but it works out. I have my list on my phone. I finished my my produce. See, I do the produce while Marissa goes and does the other stuff. And then we meet up in the middle. And I see you, and, and then I see the the announcement come in. And I was like, all right, uh, Jimmy, I, you're very passionate. But uh, no. well, my text came <laughs> right before you saw the tweet notification? Uh, literally, like, at the same time. Like, you texted, like, right at that time. I'm not going to say I'm a genie. But not. we release a podcast and then I start doing some digging. And the moment I'm like, I'm going to talk to sponsors, sporting just felt it in the universe. And they're like, nope. Oh my God. Let it go. When did you become so fucking spiritual? <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> um, but no, it was, I, I was surprised because I'm going to be honest. I did not expect that sporting Kansas City was going to do anything in the ways of reversing this decision. Yeah. At least... Till, until after this upcoming season, I would say. Well, if I, I got to tell you, I, I, I'm sure you read this amazing statement. Um, <sighs> just, I mean, just real good, real well put together. Uh, just, it, it was deeply grounded in the, in the, their principles and standards that they've adhered to, you know, since the day they acquired the team. <laughs> Let's be honest, guys. Every fucking thing that any corporation does anywhere is not for you. It is not. It is for the money that you provide. That's just the way it is. That's called capitalism. Like, let's wake up and realize that companies really don't give a shit about us. They care about our money. Yes. Right? Yeah. Tell me I'm wrong. Right. Everybody, everybody's like, oh, this company cares. The hell you say? It's <laughs> capitalism, bro. It's capitalism 101. And everyone's just like, that's the world we have to live in. That's what we choose to do because that's the right thing. It's not right. <laughs> Laugh it up. It's I, not. No, I was just laughing at like we 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 went from soccer to like socialist Dan rant, and I love it. it's economics. <laughs> now we're talking about economics. It's just I. Anytime anyone reverses course, it wasn't because the pressure you put on them on Twitter. I'm well, sorry. Let's celebrate. Our podcast did this. Let's go ahead and just say it. Our podcast did. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. Here, so I do have a comment about the the social pressure because i don't i don't think that was the sole reason but i also don't want to discount it and i'll I'll say sponsorship pressure well so okay let's get into it so i think yes i i don't know for sure which is why i wanted to find out via comment you know through the appropriate media channels and such like do you have a comment on what is happening i was thinking children's mercy compass minerals you know the 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 big name sponsors i don't think anheuser-busch probably cared but you know, they're, they're a sponsor of, <laughs> right. of, of sporting Kansas city. So, but, but children's mercy, if I'm being honest, was the, the one largely in my mind, they have a very, um, good brand. That's a very wholesome brand. They're a brand. And you that... not be wholesome by helping sick kids. Right. Exactly. Of course it's wholesome. And so having your name plastered all over the stadium and all over, you know, shirts and everything of the club that hired this man, my first thought was children's mercy can't be happy. So I was curious. Here's where I I have to believe, just like you're saying, that there was sponsorship pressure behind the scenes because that's the only logical explanation as to why this happened as quickly as it did. Now, where I do think that the social media pressure 
was important is if you looked at every single post that Sporting Kansas City put up on any social platform from the moment Gavin Wilkinson was announced to the moment that he mutually agreed to get released from his contract, how, how they phrased it, it was overrun with people constantly, no matter what the post was, mentioning Gavin Wilkinson, Gavin Wilkinson, Gavin Wilkinson. And I think what happened was sponsors know the natural progression of how things like this happen are at some point, if fans stay angry enough for long enough, they move from directing that anger at the entity who did the wrong thing and they start targeting the sponsors who give that entity the, that did the wrong thing the money. And I guarantee you, Children's Mercy did not want to be putting up of, I don't know if this is going to happen, but they did not want to be tweeting out a heartwarming story of how they saved a child's life and have it be yeah, but you're supporting a club that hired a sexual misconduct enabler. Yeah, They did not want that to happen. So I would not be surprised if they saw that it was not letting up and went to sporting and said, we are not comfortable with this. That's okay. pure speculation. But that's where, okay, that you're right. So some Twitter pressure definitely probably did something. It, it helped. But what it's I mean is, reason. where it's definitely, it's a money situation. It's because of that pressure. Like, they're not like, oh, our fans are really upset. We need to reverse course because Correct. we care about them so much. Correct. No, that's not what happened. No, that didn't. They, they tried to put it, so their statement, um, you know, we want to share with the Sporting Kansas City community that we have mutually agreed with Gavin Wilkinson to release him from his recently announced role with our club. And here's where they, the very next phrase is where they make their first mistake, in my view, from a comps perspective. In making this difficult decision, difficult, that's an interesting adjective to put that's in there. That's interesting. Um, we want to first acknowledge the passion of our fans and our community of supporters, our partners, and our stakeholders. So that's where I'm like, oh, partner stakeholders, that's the money. There it is. Uh, together, they comprise our deeply valued sporting family. Is that us? Our act yep, that's us, sporting family. Our action today demonstrates our longstanding, unequivocal respect for their voices and the belief that we are all stronger when we listen to one another. Unequivocal? Goddamn, Mike Illig, you're a wordsmith. There can well. <laughs> here's, you know, the, there's some missteps in the parts that I just read, I would say as well. But here's the, here's the biggest misstep. This entire paragraph. We ran a diligent and exhaustive process to identify our new sporting director. It oh, was shit. grounded in the deeply held principles and standards we have adhered to since the day we acquired the team. Now, I work in communications. I've never had to deal with something like this. I think hopefully I never will. You know what I would do if I were reviewing this statement before Sporting Kansas City put it out? I would have uh, command select that entire paragraph and hit the delete button and get it on out of there. Yeah. Because when you are trying to walk back a decision and apologize, which they didn't apologize if you notice in here, but no. if you're trying to walk back a decision, don't also simultaneously defend the decision you are Correct. admitting and walking back. Correct. They're, they defended it. They justified it. They, they're in no way in this whole thing was ownership taken. No. There was no, there was no we realized we made a, a miscalculation. That's all you had to say. We had an error of judgment. Mm-hmm. And that that wasn't said. We just were told more about their uh, exhaustive process to hire this man. So they, they did a good it. job. I would like they, to applaud that. They finished it following up that paragraph saying, that said, the impassioned response from our fans reinforced to us a fundamental philosophy that has driven us since day one to honor and protect our valued relationships. It is in that spirit that we take this action today, reflective of our abiding appreciation for our unrivaled SKC fans and our Kansas City community. So basically what they admit in that final statement is we actually don't think we did anything wrong. The only reason we're doing this is because y'all wouldn't shut up. That's that's my, you know, layman's interpretation of what yeah. they're saying. You're 100% right. Nowhere did they say we take accountability for a decision we made. We made it an error. We realize that error now. We shouldn't have made the decision. You are right holding us accountable and we're going to do better going forward. That's all they had to say. Don't pee on my shoe and tell me it's Thursday, okay? Don't do that. Well, what if it is Thursday? I don't know. I was, trying to, <laughs> I was making something up. See if it was sick. Just throwing stuff out there. But the thing, dude, I'm just like, I don't know. We've all had to, over the years, I've worked at being a better communicator. 
anyone who is in a relationship of any kind, friendship, marriage, girlfriend, mm-hmm. you're going to work on that stuff. And I, I always know if I fuck up, which, but guess what? I'm not perfect. I know you're all thinking <laughs> you're probably an excellent lover. No, that's not it. <laughs> Listen, I fuck up. It happens. And I take ownership. I never try to deflect anymore. Used to be a rat bastard. Now I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. Yeah. If you if you are in a relationship, if you've had a friend that you've had a disagreement with, a parent or whatever, the moment that you're trying to apologize or accept responsibility and you're like, but everything you've said before the but yeah. is gone. I'm sorry, but you, you made us do it. You know, something like that. It's like if you, if you did something that Marissa was mad about and you went to her and you go, I know since the day we got married, <laughs> we've we got married in the spirit of our shared values and principles. <laughs> and now I know in making the decision I made, I went through an exhaustive thought process before I made that decision. <laughs> but in the spirit of our marriage, because you wouldn't shut the fuck up, I'm yeah. going back on it reflective of my abiding appreciation for you uh <laughs> that's basically what it what it came across as and i don't think that was the intent behind the the statement but that's how it was received so i don't know there there is more this developed beyond this statement that i definitely want to talk about i think we should probably take our, our first break here real quick before we move on to that so let's take a break and then we'll come back and talk about what happened after the announcement was made We appreciate you supporting KC Sports Network by listening to our podcast. You have helped us become the highest ranked Chiefs podcast network in 2022 and 2023. And don't forget about our daily Substack newsletter, the best written analysis you can find on the Chiefs straight to your inbox every day. KCSN.substack.com. Bro, (laughs) why are you laughing? (laughs) I'm just here. I'm having a good time. You laughing because I tooted and the mic might have picked it up? I was going to let it go, but... You don't have to let it go. Hey, <laughs> guess what? Even the sexiest people in the world fart. It happens. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I heard it. I'm, I don't know if our listeners did, because I was trying to, hey, like, to cover it up, but... It had to be done. You don't have to rant. I'm so sorry that there's bodily functions. I wish we could all just toot whenever we want. Why has it got to be socially unacceptable? It doesn't smell. What if it smelled? Then it's a bad deal. Oh, uh-huh. that's true. We probably you ever, wouldn't you ever, it if it smelled. You ever let a little toot go in the office? Yeah. See, I think they might have a, a software program that eliminates background noise so nobody would have known. I don't care, dude. I'm an open book. <laughs> I'm an, I don't I don't need to hide things. Like, oh my God, you toot? That's crazy. I got a butt too. <laughs> well, I'm I'm glad that you're so open with your body. You're over there giggling like a little schoolgirl that I pooped in class or something. Uh, well, no, I'm <laughs> laughing, honestly, because unless if you're watching this on YouTube, you should go check it out, KCSN Soccer on YouTube. It happened in your face immediately became like a dog who got caught doing something in the house. It shouldn't. <laughs> it did. It did. I, was, I was looking at you like, does he know? Does he yeah, know? <laughs> I did. So. I ain't even embarrassed. I'm not even embarrassed to the oh, hundreds of people that listen to this. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> so, Okay, Friday happens, announcement made in the morning. There's a lot of complicated feelings, at least for me. I, my first thought is, great, I'm going to be able to, to to enjoy sporting Kansas City soccer more now than I could a day ago. I don't know if you felt that as well, but that was that was honestly my first thought was, this will make it easier for me to focus on the soccer this season. Yeah, I mean, there's still... There's still problems, right? Like there's all the problems we've all been talking about for years, stuff mm-hmm. like that. But mm-hmm. this is a big one. You know, it's better and, and you can feel a little more uh excited about it, right? Like I was excited to go travel and see the team than I was to go to like a home game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, honestly. Um it, it did get a little more interesting and this story probably hasn't gotten the attention that it deserves. Uh later that night, um, uh, Jeff Reuter who writes for The Athletic. If you can subscribe to The Athletic and you don't, I, I recommend it. It's some of the best MLS coverage you can get out there in terms of like quality journalism and commentary uh, from a league-wide perspective. He updated his story. He talked to, well, he asked for comment from Nolan Partners, which is the sports executive recruiting firm that Sporting Kansas City cited a number of times in their initial press conference as part of this process. Nolan Partners declined to comment, but multiple sources with knowledge of the hiring process 
stated that Gavin Wilkinson, quote, was one of dozens of candidates for the position, but was not among those that were presented by Nolan Partners. That's crazy. That's crazy to think about. That's an interesting little tidbit. They because dropped them all, a lot of times in that you, opening conference. If you go back and you look at how often Nolan Partners was mentioned, and Mike Kuhn went through and rewatched the entire press conference and tweeted a thread of every time somebody said Nolan Partners, they don't directly say the phrase Nolan Partners gave us Gavin Wilkinson. Yeah. But they certainly heavily imply that Nolan Partners brought him, did their diligence, vetted him, and cleared him for sporting Kansas City. This is snaky, dude. Like, anything we're ever told is something that's been carefully crafted to, like, tell us a certain way. It, it, it's completely, it's completely fa- bullshit. It's all bullshit. All right, but you know what? I bet, dude, I bet you asked great questions of Peter Vermees, <laughs> and I bet he told you everything you needed to know, right? So, after the preseason game, which we will talk about here, uh, there was the, game? the first media availability for Peter Vermees after, honestly, since Gavin Wilkinson was was announced, but but certainly since he was fired. And so the first three questions, I, I, I honestly thought they might not put Peter out there, especially with the athletic story the night before, but they did. Um, and the first three questions were about Gavin Wilkinson. Daniel Sperry asked a question, um, you know, you know, regarding the way things have gone in the last week with the sporting director position and the yester- the announcement yesterday, what's been your reaction to the way things played out over the last eight or nine days? A very innocuous question, expected question. And I didn't know what I thought Peter would say. I thought he would say something, though. And he said, quote, I think our owner already answered that in a statement. And from our perspective, we're just moving on at this moment. We've just played a game and preseason's going well. That's all we're focused on. End quote. Then they call on me and I had to ask. So I said, there was a report by the athletic yesterday that Wilkinson was not among the candidates presented or identified by Nolan partners. Do you have a comment on if that's the case, who did identify him and what due diligence was done in the vetting process? And uh, Peter goes again, I think you guys had all the statement that our owner made. They own the team. They made their statement. That's the statement. There's nothing more to talk about. So if you guys want to talk about soccer and talk about the team, I'm all ears and I'm happy to answer questions. And then Aaron Ladd tries to get in there with a different strategy. And I appreciate it. (laughs) I love this man. Don't you feel like you're taking strays out there? Like, don't you want to set the record straight for your own sake is basically the gist of his question. And Peter shot him down again. (laughs) So, (laughs) I, I mean... We tried three different ways, and they're sticking with the statement was made is the statement that we're going to make. So, I don't know. Did this? How did this make you feel about Peter Vermees? Because for me, Peter Vermees gets announced as the chief soccer officer. You're the manager of Gavin Wilkinson. You're the face of this club. It stands to reason that people would want to know what your thought on this is. And I and I was surprised that we got stonewalled so much. And again, he didn't have a prepared statement of just like. Fans are very passionate. Fans are very important to us. Clearly, they were heard, and that was reflected in the statement that our ownership made. So I appreciate the passion of the fans, and I, and I look forward to their passion in this upcoming season. Boom. Easy. Yeah. I mean, how hard is that? I, I just, dude, Peter is now, the thing is, we know that man has a lot of power, if not one of the most powerful guys in the organization, despite the owners, yeah. right? So, but now he wants to play coach. Oh, I'm just a little coach. I'm down here at preseason with my little soccer team making just regular head coach decisions. I don't know anything about that other stuff. What happened? Like, he's just, it's like, come on, bro. You, there are two things you can take right now. You can assume, you can jump on this train, this path, that Peter was 100% in charge of making this deal. Nolan Partners presented their stuff, and Peter was like, nah, my guy over here, he's great. He's from New Zealand. You're going to love him. Uh, (laughs) Or you can say that the ownership looks very incompetent backtracking on this, like, so quickly to 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 have that error of judgment to even hire the guy. Like, they're all over the place that they didn't even think of this. So which path do you want to take? If you had to choose one right now, what are you saying? 
I mean, Yemen yeah, Wilkinson doesn't get hired without the approval in some way of Peter Vermees. That's my gut yeah. feeling. Um, yeah. I have my theories as to how this actually played out. I don't think it's ownership forced it on Peter. I don't think it was Peter's idea. I think it was some combination somewhere in the middle. Ownership had an idea. Peter said, if we're going with that idea, I get my guy. That's probably what happened. Uh, that in, sounds I, right. in, in my estimation, I have no definitive reporting that that is the case. That's just an educated guess. Um, but it is what it is. So as far as sporting is concerned, it's a done, done and dusted matter. Um, that remains to be seen. I think it's up to the fans. And if you look at their social media, it certainly looks a lot more normal like it did in years past than it did when, uh, you know, the week that Gavin Wilkinson was here. But we'll see. I, I mean, quite honestly, if this story gets advanced anymore, it, it depends on if if more media outlets or or journalists can, can uncover more information. And if they can, it, it, it'll continue. And if they can't, this is going to be a weird time in sporting Kansas City history that I think will will leave some some bruises on it for for people. But how ballsy are these reporters and yourself, people that attend post game pressers? Will that will will any more questions be asked of this at all, or are they going to be scared by Peter and not ask at all? I mean, we'll see. I don't, I don't know that I can answer that yet. I mean, I think... Will they gag you guys? Will they say, hey, no questions about this, we're done? Will they say something like that? It's possible. I don't know. I, I mean, I've seen I've seen sports um, PR people who, when, when a press conference isn't going the way they want it to, they'll come in and say, they'll say, okay, we're done. Um, but, you know, I, sport in Kansas City, on a typical typical game, it's, it's someone from the star, usually Daniel Sperry, it's myself who's there, and it's a bunch of guys from Kansas City Soccer Journal. And then occasionally you might have uh, a KSHB guy in um, in Aaron or um, Fox Four is occasionally out there. Um, that's a but that's about it. There's some Spanish language media. This isn't like there's not you know the Athletic or or the AP or whatnot that are there constantly. So it, it really just depends on how much you know some independent media members are are able to to get answers and and i think i think that honestly i think that'll be hard but it's not not worth the effort so we'll see I, yeah if if i if i'm presented the opportunity to ask you know reasonable questions in a professional and respectful way again i i will do it i'm not going to i'm not going to do it just to be a dick I'm not going to do it in a way that's not professional or not reasonable, but I think there are some reasonable questions still to be asked and, and we'll see. So I feel you, but I don't know there, uh, I guess on a, a more uplifting note, there was an actual game that was played sporting Kansas city's preseason started. And for the first time this year, they went from Arizona to Florida for their preseason. And so they went from negative five degrees in Kansas city to 74 degrees in Miami. <laughs> Look, I, I, the whole world is all about Inter Miami and Leo Messi, and uh, I guess we'll just go to Miami too, because did you know Miami's preseason games get streamed? They, yeah, they do get streamed. Uh, they were. Um, That's it. No one else <laughs> does. They were streaming Miami versus FC Dallas, you know, an hour or so before we were recording on MLSsoccer.com. Was that today? Well, that was today. Last I looked, okay. Dallas was winning. So that's crazy though. Like I, I just, I wish they had the capability to stream it all. You know what I mean? I don't know what that means for media rights. I, I, I don't, I don't get it. I do know that I have a friend who was at the FC Dallas game. He's a, he's a Dallas supporter and he brought in a sign, just simple cardboard sign written in black Sharpie. And it just says not here for messy. D T I D Dallas till I die. Simple sign, right? Yeah. This is at Dallas's home stadium. Sure. That sign was confiscated when he went. Huh? Mm-hmm. Confiscated, and then they made him show that he had actual tickets. So the the, the messy protection is strong right now. What is going on? Like I don't. Okay, that makes me want to like hope that every team brings signs. Like that story needs to go pretty doggone viral 
So every opposing fan is bringing a sign like that. It's a pretty innocuous sign. Pretty it's basic. Not, it's it, not disrespectful it, in any way. No, it's banter. It wasn't like, Messi sucks, a huge one. You know, it wasn't yeah. even bad. It's yeah. it's it's typical fan banter, man. That's people do that all the time. Yeah. So, I don't know, but um, but sporting have did. Messi see it. Soft <laughs> Messi, you'll hurt his feelings. They did go down to Miami. They are not playing into Miami. They played Florida International University. Oh, that soccer. powerhouse! Hell yeah. <laughs> Um, it was two 30 minute periods. I could read you the lineups, but they don't really mean anything because they're not, it's just honestly random. This is, this is just recess. They're just having fun. Yeah. And, uh, sporting ended up winning four to one. Daniel Shallowy scored in the fourth minute. Willie Agata scored in the 23rd minute. Um, and then, uh, was it Stephen Afrifa almost scored. Johnny Russell did score in the 40th minute. Uh, St- Stephen Afrifa finally did get his goal, the fourth goal, in the 52nd minute. Um, and then 55th minute, uh, FIU pulled one back. But 4-1, preseason one. tell you, you had two 30-minute halves. Just a 60-minute game. Mm-hmm. You had two different lineups for those halves. And both lineups scored two goals per mm-hmm. half. So... Mm-hmm. That dude, that's that's as much as you can ask for coming out of that those lineups. I mean, yeah, I don't know. And they were very mixed, right? They're very mixed. Like Fonta sure. should have been with this guy, Tim Million, Pulse Camp should have been swept. You know, you could make Polito didn't whole play. Other, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there there are guys who are just, you know, they're 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 trialists. But our scorers scored goals. Dan Shallowy, like Willie Agata, Johnny Russell. And Stephen Afrifa, they scored goals. Eric Tommy had some good passes. Like the the this is, um, I would rather go this way than than a, a you know scoreless draw with FIU in in their yeah. first quote unquote competitive match of the year. Tough to score so. goals, anyways, but it shows a little hunger to see two goals. You know, to average two goals per thirty minutes. Yeah, for sure. It um, it's it's exciting. I mean, I think this is um, it's it's. Like I said, it's a good thing that Sporting Kansas City is out there scoring goals, even if it's just a tune-up against a college team. Uh, they're going to continue uh, the preseason journey in, in the coming weeks ahead of the season opener at the end of uh, February. But I don't know, man. It'll be interesting. I know um, Alan Polito, like I said, did not play because he was just, you know, he's not not an injury, I don't think. But I don't remember if it was an illness or what. Uh, but this Friday, um, they're playing Charlotte FC. And then Nashville SC uh, the following Tuesday before they have a little break and then finish out again against Miami FC, not Inter Miami, Miami FC, and Atlanta United FC. So they're going to get three quality MLS sides in this preseason stint. So hey, it's nice that uh, that they're getting some some competitive soccer here, and and we're about what a month away from real life MLS soccer. Just about, man. If it's if it keeps being cold around here, I might just have to make the trip to the opener in Houston. <laughs> yeah, for real. It's uh, it's it's definitely. Hopefully, it's starting to warm up a little bit. It is, but it is. It's uh, it's definitely been cold. So, um, let's see here. Uh, there haven't there hasn't been any movement in terms of transfers. Um, for for Sporting Kansas City, Peter Vermees. Peter Vermees did say that they're still working on trying to uh, find some players to to bring in. Um, There's a rumor that dropped on Twitter today. I saw you tweet it. And there is a rumor that Tom Bogert, little Tom bomb, if you will, uh, he tied a player well known in MLS circles, Kellen Acosta. To sporting Kansas City. Of course, Acosta's a midfielder. Many of you probably are familiar with him from his days, um, either with um, the Chicago, uh, excuse me, um, uh, Colorado Rapids, or uh, FC Dallas originally, um, LAFC. He's a U.S. men's national team player, although he hasn't been in the picture as much lately. If you had to, do you know how old Kellen Acosta is, like off the top of your head? Uh, you, 25. Oh, 25? Okay. I see. I would have thought he was closer to like 30. I don't point. know. I, I thought you were quizzing me. <laughs> I was. I was gonna, I was gonna see if you were gonna guess, but I, I was banking on you going older. Um oh, do you know? I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
So he's he's 28 years old, which surprised me because I would have thought he would have been 30, 31. He's a little younger than I thought because he's been around for a while. But um, would you take him on your team? I would take him as a rotational midfielder that does not have to be a consistent starter if the price was right. He is not a designated player by any means for me. I would ideally not like him to really be a TAM player, although if you look at his salary from last year, it was approaching $1.3 million. So that's TAM territory. Oh, man. Um, I was going to say, yeah, you can't even make him be like a Roger Espinosa type sub. Like, he's going to want more money than that. Like, no doubt. He's going to yeah. have offers. If you could get him for under a million and he only had to use a little bit of TAM, you know, and obviously he could still be, you know, paid down under, so you still have your DP spot and whatnot. I don't hate the idea of having a guy who could essentially play all three positions in the midfield and has, you know, still some legs underneath them at only 28 years old, being able to essentially, during any game, rotate in for one of the three positions that we have on the field. Um, I think losing Gotti Kinda is a big blow, and I still hope the team can identify a number 10 designated player, but I, it doesn't appear that that's happening before the season. So if you have someone like Helen Acosta, that, that adds some depth. I don't know. What do you think? No, yeah, I, I like him. I've liked him for a while now. I've always enjoyed the way he plays. So um, I, I, don't see a, I don't see a negative here. Yeah, he's not somebody who is going to be like, you know, a, a 15 goal a year scorer. He's not like a pure number six defensive midfielder, but was the rumor we're talking to him. It said sporting Kansas city. Uh, the, the leader in the clubhouse right now is, uh, the Chicago fire. Um, but, and it says, Tom says sources brief from the talk, say the fire remain hopeful of landing Acosta, but those same sources add that sporting Kansas city remains in the mix as do the Colorado Rapids who joined the chase late and would love to facilitate a return for the midfielder. Okay. Yeah, I'm not too... Uh, no, I'm not too sold on it. I just... Uh, I don't know. It'd be scary to... As a player, <clears throat> what are you looking for what, between those clubs? Like, what are you gauging? You're like, Chicago kind of sucks, but I could go help them uh, be better. Sporting seems like a logistical mess with certain... Ownership yeah. things and Colorado, you know, he's been there. I don't think the players, like, I don't think the Wilkinson stuff reached the players really much, and I don't think it'll reach future players really. Um, but it's I wasn't was, that. I mean, Peter is obviously a winning coach, but he's also scary. <laughs> so yeah. I would think, like, hmm, I don't know, another scary boss. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, you know, but if you look at the those three teams and who's best set up to potentially win this season. I mean, I think it's pretty clearly sporting Kansas City. Oh, no one's counting us out at all, especially the way we ended the season. Like everyone expects us to keep going. Yeah. Get the ground running and and not be winless for 10 games, you know. Yeah, so I mean, if I'm if I'm Kellen Acosta and my first thought is I want to have a chance at winning and making some noise, um I think Sporting Kansas City is my choice. Um, now, like I said, I don't want anywhere near the one point three six five million in guaranteed compensation that he he got last year. It would have to be um, under a million for me um, for for this to make sense. I do not know what uh, Chicago would be offering, and maybe he would prefer to live in Chicago than Kansas City. Although I personally like Kansas City more as a place to live than Chicago. Uh, I don't know, but this is this is the first like legitimate rumor that hasn't just been like people guessing that's come about. So I think that's why people are gravitating to it because it's like, oh, this might actually be a new signing that's not a backup left back. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. We'll see as things go on. Um, it will be interesting. I know that you know people like Matt Doyle um, still. Uh, have been saying that a designated player number 10 is really what Sporting Kansas City needs. So we'll see. If we hear any rumors, we'll let you know. But yes, I did want to go through a, a couple emails that we did get. 
um, that are not necessarily related to the Wilkinson situation, but but this one was interesting um, from Brian Scarborough. Um, he goes, hey, it's been a minute since I reached out, but I was thinking about this year's Inter-Miami game at Arrowhead. It turns out that the game is on April 13th, 2024. The first ever KC Wiz game, April 13th, 1996 at Arrowhead. I really hope they lean into the KC Wiz history and maybe even wear a throwback jersey to commemorate the anniversary of the first MLS game in Kansas City. Has it been announced that that is going to be their throwback game? It has not. I swear I saw someone I don't think say so. that it will, or I, I don't know. Uh, I have not seen it publicly, but I thought it was, I don't know, could just be some speculation, which I'm here for. But um, they should, why not, have a bunch of freaking retro kits and oh, for sure. sell them. Yeah, it says that the 2024 theme matches are to be announced soon, at least according to mm-hmm. SportingKansasCity.com. Uh, if you get a customized Messi SKC jersey, all oh, this my God. They shouldn't allow that. But people do it. That's dumb. Why? How are you going to deny a sale of a jersey? You can't print opposing players on your custom jersey. There should be limitations. Why couldn't you? you uh, dude, you know how many Smiths there are? <laughs> they don't know what you're doing. It sure. could be your name. <laughs> how many How many, How many? many number 10 Messies are there that are sporting I Kansas City fans? No, I'm not, I'm not condoning this at all. I think it's stupid. But people do this. And it's weird as hell. It is strange. I would not do it. Um, so, I don't know. That's uh, just interesting. But uh, we did get an email um, from Joshua Zars, guy who's been emailing for off yeah. and on for a bit. Uh, okay. says, hooray for 2024 preseason soccer. Uh, he goes, hey guys, hope you're doing well this week, especially following the Gatton Wilkinson news. Uh, what are your takes on the coverage or lack thereof for the SKC preseason match? What were your thoughts on the lineups and the omissions from playing time? I deeply wish we could watch the matches either in person or via a live stream. It would also be nice if there was a highlights recap. It's hard to feel connected to the club as of late for obvious reasons with the Wilkinson hire and fire, but the general lack of engagement with the building of the 2024 season, no new signings, and all the departures. I've seen multiple other clubs release their promo schedules and keep wondering if there will be any new ones for SKC to get hyped about. So that's the, he's got more. He asked about um, the new kit, what we'd want to see, et cetera. Um, so, but I appreciate yeah. your email, Josh. So there's a lot of questions there, but. Um, Dude, I got to say, I agree with, with a lot of that, you yeah. know, but like as far as preseason coverage, it's always been hit and miss over the years. A lot of times they're like closed practices, you know, they don't want any strategy yeah. leaking out or something. Yeah. Uh, but I will say, I think their socials, despite being review bombed by GW out and everything, I think they've done a decent job of trying to include uh, highlights and stuff. Yeah. And and that's just, it's just taking a phone and they're just basically recording any kind of thing that might be a play. Yeah. And then de- deleting all the shit that's not, you know, it's like, hey, you got one. Yeah, I think pre-COVID, people got um, a little spoiled with some of the streaming of preseason matches that we used to get. And now, but even then, remember, it usually wasn't these first few preseason games. It was usually the, you know, the Arizona Cup or whatever it used to be called, Desert Diamond Cup. Desert Diamond Cup. uh, I couldn't remember if that was the MLS preseason thing or a Mario Kart Cup. But Uh, (laughs) MLSsoccer.com is all over these Miami games. And it's, it's... it's preseason for them too, but it's like there's a clear bias here, and damn it if that doesn't freaking hurt. Right. Well, they're going on their like international tour where players are getting hurt for the season on pitches in Guatemala or Buddy, they, El Salvador, I think. They like counter programmed MLS playoffs to show a friendly between Miami and New York City. Yeah, it was wild. Uh, that is the dumbest thing. I <laughs> I couldn't believe it. It's a distress it's disrespect to the rest of your league. Yeah. So, you know, I do, um, I don't think there's anything to read into regarding the lack of preseason coverage. I think that's just the norm now. I do think the social SKC match day was live tweeting the game and, and sporting Kansas City's main account yeah. putting up goal highlights. So you could see those. Yeah, true. Uh, uh, you know, dude, as far as jerseys go, what I want to see. Okay. I wasn't unhappy with last year's. So it's cool that that's sticking around. The hoops. Yes, it grew on me a little bit. Okay. But everyone's thinking, speculating, mm-hmm. maybe a little Argyle situation's coming, which I know you all get boned up for. Yeah. But, but the thing is, I would like to see a little 
that's if we're getting a third jersey, if that is true, like it was rumored, I want like a retro style homage, man. So a rainbow, maybe put a rainbow on the back collar or something. I don't know. Well, did you see the um, the rumor uh, about four or five days ago from Footy Headlines about what the third kit will be? No. So it says um, the rumor. Um, let's see here. Uh, where to go? Okay. So it says um, the Adidas 2024 MLS third kits have. Now keep in mind this is not an uh, American centric website. This is a I believe European based, but. Um, the Adidas MLS 2024 third kits have bespoke designs and color schemes for each team, but each share the same main feature. The sponsor logo on the front of the shirt is replaced with the team or city name. So um, initially, some of their mock-ups that they showed, I think this is where it just gets to Europe versus America, is like it's got Miami on the front, um, the Galaxy it just says Galaxy on the front, um, LAFC, it says Los Angeles on the front. And for SKC, it said Kansas. Oh, I, like, had... I, ho- <clears throat> I hope that's just like that when Europeans or whatever just say Sporting Kansas instead of sure. Kansas City. So they get their city names, but we don't. I'm hoping that it will say Kansas City on there. But, you know, what what the color scheme will be, that's anybody's guess. Because if Inter Miami's color scheme is really going to be taken, you know, uh, a reference to the Miami Dolphins color scheme? Are they going to give Sporting KC a Chiefs colored jersey? I don't know. Don't hate that at all. Don't hate that one bit. You, it does a little <laughs> crossover, dude. Uh, uh, lots of you know, two two Super Bowls in, in three years or whatever it was, right? Well, they won That's it last right. year, so it'll be back to back if they win it this year. If they win it again this year, can you? I I'm in, I'm in. I buy that shit. You put a little arrowhead on the sleeve or something. Why the hell not? No, and then that's a story. Now it's like, well, they won the Super Bowl last year and this year, maybe, and 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 their their o- owner, one of the owners, is uh, the quarterback of that team. So if they did do that, you'd have to premiere it at the game at Arrowhead on April third. Yeah, yes. <laughs> uh, either that or uh, uh, you know, uh, oh my God, Super Bowl halftime commercial. <laughs> oh, they did do that one year. I forgot. They did that. do that one year. That was funny. So I don't know. It'll be interesting. I, I I'm a fan of the Argyle. I don't know if we're gonna get the Argyle. I don't want to get my hopes up too much and then have the Argyle not happen because I think last year we were like maybe Argyle's coming back and then it didn't and then we just yeah had like a redesign of the old jersey. So I don't know. We'll see. But I appreciate the question, Josh. Thank you. Yeah. So long time no speak. There's one last thing I want to cover before we call it an episode this time. And this is this is a story that broke earlier today. And I don't know if you saw it because I didn't see it initially until a little bit recently. Uh, but uh, Pablo Mar from uh, The Athletic tweeted this out earlier. But I'm going to I'm going to pre I'm going to, you know. Before I go into what the story is, let me ask you, how do you feel about the quality of MLS refs? What is this trick question? <laughs> no, I just want to know. Like, how do you feel about the quality of MLS refs? Are you generally satisfied, or do you have problems with the way that sometimes things are handled? That's I mean, I guess question. there's some problems. Yeah, <laughs> I guess there's some problems. Questions. Now, what would I tell you if there is a 99 percent chance that by January 31st, pro and all MLS refs would go on strike, and if they can't come to an agreement, the league is preparing to use replacement refs for the regular season? Sounds like a goddamn infomercial you just did. <laughs> what would you say if I could offer you this diet pill? Uh, dude, that's crazy because the movie The Replacements, mm-hmm. last movie, by the way, great freaking movie. Should we go be replacement refs? Should we be? Should we cross the picket line? <laughs> should we be scabs? Well, I am a Packers fan, as you know, and so there's the noted fail Mary, as it is known uh, when the Packers beat the Seahawks but lost to the Seahawks because the replacement refs didn't know what they were doing there was an interception one ref is signaling touchdown one ref is signaling incomplete one ref like they don't know what they're doing Seahawks ended up winning oh this was 2012 2013 was this before video review or after I can't remember when that happened this was during the replacement refs so I don't they they could have they looked at it but the refs I mean only as good as the replacement refs and they were not good so um yeah bro Nick, our producer, says 2012, which I remember because I remember sitting in 
one of my classes in college watching this on my screen instead of paying attention to what the professor was saying. And I see the replay and I remember having the thought in my mind, oh, that's a clearly an interception that's going to be overturned. There's nothing to worry about. And I think I might have even looked away and started paying attention again, only to find out that, nope, they gave it to the Seahawks and it was given a touchdown. You didn't so, skip class? Not oh, not usually, no. Why wouldn't you have skipped class to watch that? What kind of fan are you? <laughs> I was watching it on my computer. What? I knew I could watch it. Gotcha. So you, you were watching. Gotcha. I was watching. I, was I didn't watching. know if you just glanced at it or what a good student going no, to class. No. It was like three hour lecture. For less. <laughs> uh, oh, I had my fair share. So, but anyway, it says, um, yeah, according to, to sources, it's very likely that pro will go on strike if um, there's no decision or no agreement reached. Um, it will be wrath. By January 31st, 99% chance one source says of this happening. Um, this says the vote among union membership, which was unanimous, set the stage for MLS to potentially need replacement refs to open its 2024 season, which starts on February 21st as Lionel Messi and Inter Miami take on Real Salt Lake. So yeah. Messi's going to get some replacement refs in in uh, one scenario that could play out here. Yeah, some fucking refs that try to get his autograph mid game. <laughs> so I think Pro also might do. MLS Next Pro and USL stuff too. So this is a this is a big deal. Yeah, it's pretty weird. Pretty it's, different. I I will say, pay those guys what they ask for because they endure a lot of vitriol. <laughs> yeah, it's um. Well, there's also so it's the Professional Soccer Referees Association is the labor union. They're the ones that will go on strike. They're trying to negotiate with Pro, the Professional Referees Organization, for their new collective bargaining agreement. But PSRA has also filed a uh, unfair labor charge with the National Labor Relations Board, alleging that Pro engaged in quote direct dealing with PSRA members and bypassing union leadership. So this might get ugly. We might we might not get actual Pro reps for a while. Um, I don't know, man. This is something to keep an eye on. Yeah, that's wild. So I just I love that Messi comes over here. And like now he's gonna be like, what? What is even happening? Right. This dude's gonna be asking for his shirt the second the game ends. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know, yeah. man. Death replacement refs left their left their reds and yellow cards in their other pants or something. <laughs> <laughs> Someone goes in hard on Messi. The ref gets in his face and starts arguing. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I pull a card, but I left him at home. I'm yeah. so sorry. <laughs> uh. That's about all I got, man. It's it's been a weird week. Um, I, I don't know. What are you thinking? You got anything else? No, you're right. It's we're it's one day shy of a month away from uh, MLS, man. So yeah, I'm excited. I say this every year. You know, I I don't do the whole New Year's resolution thing, but I'm gonna try to watch so much MLS like the other teams too, man. If it doesn't conflict with sporting. Yeah, uh, which it will. But, you know, ML, <laughs> Apple TV has that uh, you know whip around show, kind of a NFL red zone style, right? Yeah, MLS 360. And they need to because the way they put, they kind of have the, all these games start at the same times mm-hmm. instead of like spreading it throughout the day, so you could have a whole day of MLS. That's bullshit. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if um, they made any changes to MLS 360 this year because I think there's look a lot of people were critical. Like it? I was critical. I think there were a lot of things they could improve. I also were there good things about it too? There were good things about it, and I think it's cool that they're trying. So, I never watched it. I never did. I was never. I don't know. I was in a musical around that time, and I, you know, didn't have yeah. time. Didn't the biggest thing time. I think that caught everybody off guard is that there were commercials. That's <laughs> so, weird. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna try to watch more though, man. I want to be a little more educated because uh, we were in the early stages of this podcast. We were watching other games quite. At least I was quite often. Yeah, and, and like becoming more familiar with the way different teams play. And but uh, my wife actually goes, "We should watch more MLS games." And I was like, "Capitalize I, on it." I love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> do it. Yeah, yeah do it. you got to jump on that. Yeah. So, all right, my friend. I think that's uh, that's all we have. It was nice to actually be able to talk talk with them soccer, despite a little bit everything else going on. You know, we'll hey, we're scoring forward. goals already. Scoring goals. That's all you could. Four goals by four different people. Four different attackers. Yeah. I love it. We'll see what happens. So uh, <laughs> thank you all so much for listening. Make sure you follow us on Twitter and Instagram at NoOtherPod, at Dan Couser, at JCMac03. 
shoot us those emails, nootherpod at gmail.com. We do see them. We do reply to them. And uh, if we can't reply to them directly, we, we try to talk about them here. And uh, yeah, make sure you check us out on YouTube, KCSN Soccer, or through the Kansas City Sports Network app. But until next time, he's Dan. I'm Jimmy. We'll catch y'all later. See ya. Everyone toots.